In this video, we're going to talk about geometric transformations. If you're doing a rigorous linear algebra course, this probably isn't going to be useful or even tested, but it's good to know just because then you'll have practice with matrices and you'll get a good visual idea of what's going on when you see a certain type of matrix. So how do we use transformations in a plane geometrically? Well, we can use transformations and matrices to reflect a vector, to contract or expand a vector, to shear a vector, or to project a vector. So we're going to go through all possible ways we can do this, and then we'll check out a way that we can look at transformations or a series of transformations and then condense it into one transformation. So first of all, reflections. Uh, for the sake of this, our start position is always going to be a unit box that covers positive x1, positive x2. So it is this box right here. So our first matrix is reflecting through x1. So this is 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So what this means is we take 1 x1 and we take negative 1 x2. So what this does is it takes all the points on the x2 axis and makes them negative. So all of these x1s are still the same, but this x2 here gets flipped. So we get this sort of flip here where we had the box and it moved or reflected through the x1 axis. Now we can reflect through the x2 axis. So instead of taking negative 1 x2, we just take negative 1 x1 there, and then we leave the x2 the same. So now we get a reflection on this side, so the box flips over there. So those two are pretty straightforward. Reflecting through x1 is equal to x2. What this says is that the x1 now becomes 1 of x2, and the x2 becomes 1 of x1. So we're flipping the order that x1 and x2 come in to the matrix. So in this case, we still get a box in the upper right here, but it's reflected through this axis here. So we get this sort of visualization where if you had a point right here, it is now right here. So this gets reflected in the x1, x2 line, or some people call this the y equals x line if you're working in x and y. Now, of course, if we can reflect it through y equals x, we can reflect it through y equals negative x. So instead of taking 1x2 and 1x1, we take negative x2 and negative x1. So now we have this line that's reflecting here. So our box is going to end up down in this area. So we just take any point here and then we reflect it over. So if we have a point in this box at this section here, then it's going to get reflected to that point there. So that is x2 equals negative x1. Another thing we can do is we can reflect it through the origin. So that means that we're taking a negative x and a negative x2. So if we have our points, our old box there, then we're just reflecting it through the origin. So if we have a point here, the point ends up over here. If we have a point here, it ends up over here. So we end up with this box in the bottom left. So it is the same sort of idea as the previous transformation, but we have to be careful that we're not thinking of this as x is equal to negative y. Because what this does is this takes a point, say here, and it just reflects it directly there. While in this case, if we take the same point, it doesn't put it into this area here and instead it transfers it over to this area. So graphically, it's a little bit different. A little bit hard to grasp, but if you play with different functions or different vectors and you put them into a matrix like this, then you'll understand the differences. So I actually suggest you do that. You can do this on Wolfram Alpha, I believe, 
and you can put in the vector a matrix and you can kind of see what happens. So that'll help you visually. Okay, so that's reflections. Now we can contract and expand. So what we do is we say, okay, we're gonna leave our x2 the same for horizontal contraction, and we're gonna take some number of x1. So if k is bigger than one, then we expand. So our x1 becomes say three x1. So then we get this box that gets a little bit wider. So this would be our expansion if k is greater than one. But if k is between zero and one, then we contract. So let's say we take a half k, then our new box would only go halfway to x1 originally. So if this was our original point, x1, let's call this one, then this is our k greater than one, and this is our k between zero and one. So these are expect expanding and contracting in the horizontal plane. Similarly with the vertical contraction expansion, again, you're just taking some number k to be kx2s. So if k is greater than one, then you expand. If k is between zero and one, then you're contracting. So you might see a box that looks like uh, for the expansion, it might be tall like this. And for the contraction, it might be super short. So this original box, which we'll do in blue, so this is the original box, it's going to get either shorter or bigger depending on what value of k you choose. Okay, so those are contracting and expanding. Uh, reflecting, contracting, pretty intuitive. Shears get a little bit trickier. So a horizontal shear, what this says here, is this says that the x1 is just going to be x1, but this x2 is going to become x2 plus some number of x1s. So we'll start with a horizontal shear. So here's what we do. We take our baseline, so here's our box, and this point right here, this is one zero, but we are shifting it, we are shearing it. So if k is going to be less than zero, let's do k less than zero in pink. If k is less than zero, then we're going to get a shear to the left. So this point right here, this is going to be k one. But if we have a k greater than zero, then we shift in the other direction. So this is gonna be sheared to the right. So again, this point here is going to be k1. So if it's greater than zero, it goes to the right. If it's less than zero, it goes to the left. Because what we're saying is, okay, this x2, if k is less than zero, this x2 is becoming x2, and then it's taking some number of negative x1s. So it's gonna shift it to the left a little bit. And if it's positive, then it's taking some positive number of x1, so it's gonna push it to the right. Vertical shear, same sort of idea. So we start out with our box on the x2 axis here. And if k is going to be less than zero, then it gets sheared down. But if we have k is greater than zero, then it gets shifted up. So these are shears. So again, the matrix form, you see this K here. So in this case, X1 becomes X1 plus K number of X2s and X2 just stays the same as X2. So these are shears. Projections are easy, really easy. Uh, basically what you say is, okay, you're taking your image and you're cutting out one of the axes. So in this case, X1, we're removing all x2s. We have zero x2s there, so we just get x1. If we project to the x2 plane, then we're saying, okay, forget the x1 columns, we just want it to be on x2. So as an example here, let's say I have this graph, and we'll do this with a vector that looks like 
say that. So that goes right to there. And we want to project it onto the x2 axis. So we get a matrix that says, okay, I don't want any x1s, but I want one x2. So what happens? Well, all the points just collapse onto this axis. So this is your projection, this line right here. It says, okay, I don't want any I don't want this wideness here. So let's get rid of this wideness. Let's get rid of the fact that this x1 axis even exists and just put it onto x2. So that is a projection. Okay, so suppose I have a sequence of reflections and you can also do this with shears, you can do this with projections, expansions, contractions, but suppose I do the following. I reflect across the x1 axis I reflect across the x2 axis, and then I reflect across the origin. Well, what we can do is we can say, okay, we have this point x, and it's going to go through some transformations. We're going to call this transformation t, we'll call this transformation s, and this one r. So first, we take x, and then we apply t to it. So that's number one. And then we apply s. So we take our t of x, and then we apply s to it. Okay, so now that we've done that, we take our s of t of x, and we apply r to it. So those are three transformations here, and what do we learn from the last video? This means that we can represent these as matrices. So this is really equal to c times b times a of x for some three matrices c, b, a, x. Now, you don't know this yet, but you will learn this, and that's you can multiply matrices together. So this c, b, a matrix is actually going to become some simpler matrix D that does the exact same thing as a, then b, then c. So this is actually the same thing as some matrix D times the vector x. So instead of doing all three, I can just do one simple step. But finding that simple step takes a little bit of work. So for this example, we're going to use a picture and figure out what's going on here. So I'm going to draw a graph here. Doesn't look too bad. I'm going to take a point. Let's call this one, two. First, I'm going to reflect it across the x1 axis. So what that means is I'm keeping the 1, but I'm changing the y or the x2 to a negative. So this becomes 1, negative 2. Then I'm reflecting across the x2 axis. So this becomes negative 1, negative 2. But now I'm reflecting it across the origin. So this point's going to move up here. And what does it mean when I reflect across the origin? Well, it means I take the negative of both. So I end up at the point 1, 2, which is exactly the same point as I started out with. So what is this transformation r of s of t of x? Well, this is just the same thing as taking i n of x. So we're not even doing anything. We're just putting the identity matrix into x and we're getting back to the same point. So if you ever want to take a point and use a matrix to get back to the same point, you can do three reflections, or you can just put it in the identity matrix and not do anything and not touch it. So that's transformations that happen geometrically. If this video helped you, please share it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can.